welcome back to my channel it is your girl ash and if you are new hey girl hey child welcome to the craziness of ashland so if you like recaps like this family stuff fashion lifestyle this is where you want to be go ahead and hit that subscribe button but let's go ahead and jump into this recap let's not even waste any time all right so we are fresh off of you know this label going on and really i was so confused was y'all confused i was so confused at the beginning of this episode with this little white girl and this little like okay let's get to it what's going on here um and then it basically basically it's basically showing us a preview of what's to happen in the future because basically jill is going to ask this girl to sign with nasty girl records so boom let's go ahead and jump into uh the present yes so they're all talking about you know the launch of nasty girl records where we're at where we're going with this and um everything's going good basically everybody's working on their album they putting all their money into you know everybody's putting the all of basically like all their savings all their money into this uh record label so it like has to pop so since zadie and muffin are still you know working on you know their albums they want to go ahead and push valeria's album which she's actually a little bit reluctant of you know she is excited about you know the new project that she's on and her music but she's not exactly ready to put it out there but there's this artist resonance or whatnot who's a puerto rican you know artist like her that wants to work with her so that as well is going to you know help to put you know nasty girl records on the map and just like you know help to get them some coins because everybody is broke right all right y'all so this girl her name is maddie and basically she is a um she's a star on a show called Anna Cadabra, like the Anna Cadabra, so it looks like you know, like the you know, one like a little Disney show or whatever for like preteens or whatever, whatnot. So, um, Jill is as well is acting as well, so they're both in this show together or whatever or whatnot. And you know, she's you know, going over lines, whatever, whatever. And Maddie, I guess, forgets her line and. Um, they have to cut, and her mom, I guess, is that ultimate momager. She's, like, really, basically, I ain't gonna say she forced, but she strongly suggested that she take her Adderall or whatever or whatnot. And you can just see in Maddie's face that there's dissatisfaction. She doesn't want to take the Adderall. Like, clearly, that relationship is not, like, the best relationship right now. And it's... I'm like, okay, what's going to come of this? Because obviously, you know, we see in the beginning, Jill asking her to, you know, be, you know, signed to Nasty Girl Records. So it's like, okay, let's see how this going to pop or whatever or whatnot. Because I was like, what is this randomness? Who is this randomness? And why have we not got any updates as far as like, I've random thinking about it, think, talking about Brie. Um, where is that girl that, that was pregnant? Like, are we not going to come back from that? Like, is anybody else been wondering, like, what's been going on with that? So, so, anywho, basically, um, Valeria goes and she's, you know, working with, you know, Renaissance, you know, they're, you know, in the studio and they're just, you know, mainly just talking about the project and apparently baby girl got the whole thing mixed up. Like she was super excited. She thought she was going to be able to really like get to her Puerto Rican roots or whatever or whatnot and be able to rap in Spanish and dude was like, yeah, I think that, you know, we might have different ideas about the direction of this going. He wants her to do her normal, sexy Puerto Rican thing. And she's like, like, no, like, I want, you know, I want to get into this. Like, that would be hot, you know, two Puerto Rican, you know, artists speaking in their native language. Like, you know, what's, what's wrong with that? And he's basically like... I didn't even know you spoke Spanish. I took you as a gringa. And uh, when I looked that up, apparently that's basically like, it's like an insulting word that they use for other foreign females. 
that's just according to Google, okay? Because really, I, you know, Googled it up real quick. So, be the way. Like, I had heard it before, um, I feel like, in, like, movies and TV and stuff. Um, but didn't really know what it means. So, when he said that, I was like, uh. Because she was like, I'm not even going to, you know, even respond to that, basically. So, I was like, yeah, that ain't good. Like, that was, like, low-key and so, so. He's basically like, you going to do how I want you to do it. I don't need you on this record or whatever, whatnot. So, boom. Joe, uh. Jojo, not Jojo, uh, Naomi is, you know, working hard, she's been on SoundCloud, stuff like that, trying to find, you know, new artists or whatever or whatnot, and in the midst happens to get a call from Jojo's dean, who basically is telling us that Jojo hasn't even been to school. So, of course, what do they do? They confront Jojo and, you know, trying to figure out, you know, what's going on. Her and, of course, her dad, Eric, okay? So, they confront JoJo and basically, like, like, what's going on? JoJo's like, yes, I'm not really feeling it anymore. I've been hanging out with a bunch of people, different people, you know, who've been places. And I've just been, basically, she feels like, like, basically, her world has been, like, one way. Like, she hasn't been, like, introduced to or been able to delve, I guess, into any other things or whatever, whatnot. And she's basically, like rap i want to rap i want to be a rapper like i can rap and naomi is not for like both of them are like shocked at, at like one thing but naomi's like no you're gonna stay in school this is not it and eric tries you know like interject to kind of like further like you know kind of figure out you know like where she want to go like where she, as far as like the music thing and she naomi completely cuts him off tells him oh he just new to this and can he take a step back okay first off didn't naomi leave her with family to go and do her career so what makes her so more granted yes he's new to being a dad you've been a mom but you haven't been around so it's kind of like what makes you much better than eric and then when she's like i'm gonna you know i'm grown i can drop out of school if i want to i don't have to listen to y'all then she goes back to like eric like back me up you just told me to go sit my tail over there in the corner now you want me to back you up like this is this is one thing like and i get it I get that, you know, parents, yes, should be in, on a united front or whatever or whatnot. I, I completely understand that. But at the same time, like, when y'all don't agree, don't tell your child father or don't tell your child's mother that, you know, you don't do this or you sit back. Like, nobody's, regardless of somebody's new coming in situation, like, I can get, like, every, like, in order for them to feel like a parent, in order for them to be respected as a parent from, you know, even from the child state, Circum from yeah from the child space we need to act like it regardless if he just like came in like and i'm not like y'all want to basically do this back and forth with each other cool but do that not away from a child like she said united front or whatever or whatnot and either way eric is just like you know this is what we did we hustled like are we surprised like i wasn't surprised that you know like she's already like technically into the music she does the piano like this could actually be what they need for the record label or whatever or whatnot like they they talk about this you know they're not really going to get anybody that's already in the industry already so it's either going with somebody new going with somebody like them who's seasoned in the game and just hasn't been around for a long time um but so that's that jojo's like i'm gonna do what i want to do regardless of whether y'all gonna support me or not or whatever or whatnot so jill's very interested in maddie and trying to understand maddie or whatever or whatnot and even like she goes to her trailer to like go for a walk and the girl was like did you ask my mom like she's trying to understand like you know their dynamic and their relationship and basically you know she is the cash cow the daughter's the money and she's based the mom is i don't say living through her but she's just making sure that money ain't gonna go nowhere and so basically she ends up telling her you know that they're just bonding i just having a moment about you know how basically jill kind of relates to her and she basically says that you know their relationship is different basically because they have a conservative ship 
conservatorship. That's what, yeah, I think I pronounced that right. Basically, that just means that, yes, that's her mom, but her mom has a legal responsibility over her, you know, because she sees her as unfit to be able to take care of and do things for herself or whatever and whatnot. Which I'm at this point like, is Matt is it Maddie Maddie looks like she at least eighteen, no? I that's what I should have looked up. Like what I should have looked up more into the conservativeship. Like I could see that maybe like for somebody who, you know, is maybe older but has um, you know, capabilities or whatever or whatnot, not actually able to actually physically, financially, you know, be able to take care of themselves because they physically might not be able to do it or mentally might not be able to do it or whatever or whatnot. So I'm sitting here like, no wonder this shit like looks weird. Like what's really going on with them two either mama is crazy or you're crazy so wh who who not telling what or whatever so either way um so naomi goes you know and expresses like you know because again they all live in all in one household you know she expresses you know to valeria you know like the issues you know that she's having with jojo wanting to be you know drop out of school to be a rapper and low-key valeria's kind of like on the same train as eric like She's technically grown. She can, you know, make these decisions on her own. Technically, she wants to drop out of school. Really, it's really nothing that you can do about, like, what's the worst. But, you know, of course, like, she's wrapped up in, you know, the industry stuff. You know, just, just you know, what she doesn't want her daughter, you know, to go through that or whatever. And then on the flip side, Valeria is, like, you're trying to, you know, like, you know, I get it that I haven't exactly, basically what she called it, that I've kind of been a sort of Rican or whatever or whatnot because I've really pushed nothing but English music, but she was excited to kind of, you know, go ahead and, you know, do something different and, you know, expand her horizons or whatever or whatnot. And basically, Naomi is, like, running things. She's just like, well, we... Because basically it sounds like, like Valeria is like, I'm not even going to do it if I can't even, you know, do do it how I wanted to do it, even though he asked you to, you know, like, I, whatever. Like, basically, Valeria wanted to do what she wanted to do and was thinking about even not doing it. And JoJo and Naomi was like, I don't know why JoJo's name just keeps coming out of my mouth this episode, but Naomi's just like, running things like telling everybody what to do like telling her like no you need to do this we need it um you know ba ba basically like you know we can't push it back anymore your release date is this She's like i just need a couple basically i think she was just trying to pitch like okay what if i did you know switch some things up and i you know put some different tracks though you know some spanish tracks on the record and then basically Naomi would basically shut that down or whatever. But Naomi is calling all shots right now. And as I stuffed going along, I was starting to see it. Like, who told you that you would be the one making all the decisions, running things, and can't nobody else have nothing to say? So, of course, we knew that JoJo was going to be able to get in Eric's ear and convince him to at least hear her to do a track or whatever or whatnot and basically to kind of like come up with a deal with each other so he's like all right come on like get in the booth let me hear you but once you get in there like it's straight it's straight business like we ain't you know I'm not your dad so she get in there and she do her little thing y'all she spit her little bars and um you know Eric's like yo this this was all right this was lit but look this what we do this what we're gonna do I cannot, we ain't getting past your mom. So basically, you go back to school and I'm going to work on, you know, talking to her. What does she do? She goes behind his back and technically goes ahead and releases the song on the low key on the sneak tip. Like, like you couldn't just be grateful that he going to hear you out. Like, like, like you want to go and you want to go and make things worse. No one darn well that he going to be the one that's going to be in it with your mama when things like hit the fan. So basically, Jill now is all wrapped up in the Maddie stuff. She's like. She wants something different. She wants to do something different. She goes to the girls like we should try to sign her. We should see if we you know we can basically kind of like get her on our team or whatever or whatnot. And they're they pushing back on her because you know she's some 
Pop, Hannah Montana, Disney Channel, Persona or whatever or whatnot. But, you know, just like but that's not what she wants to be. Like she wants to expand. She wants to, you know, try other things like this is, you know, she's this persona because this is, you know, this is just what she's doing right now. This is what her mom wants to be or whatnot. And with that not like really rolling over with the girls to and then to add insult to injury she didn't got arrested for so-called shoplifting but let's be clear this is technically what happens and this is what led to jill asking her to sign to nasty girl records she basically got her own self locked up y'all because she was just tired and she wanted space and she wanted freedom like who does that who does that if it's that bad, who does that, like, willingly will get themselves locked up just so, like, they could, like, life is rough. Life is bad for baby, for Miss Maddie here, okay? Because she over here making a little bit of change, and then she's got her mama over top of her and on her, like, white on rice. Ooh, I'm so sorry for you. All right, Ashley, don't do her like that. I, had to, I just wanted to be sarcastic real quick, but okay. Let's be honest, some of y'all was thinking it like this girl here, like got the nerve to be complaining about something when there's other people out here, like, come on y'all. And then after how she did them in the end, like, so anyway, they end up, you know, Jill does get her or whatever, whatnot. So in the next scene, really at this point, we already seen what happened as far as like her asking her to sign and her bailing her out of jail. So that we just get right to, you know, them, you know, being like in that little dance studio that that be in or whatever or whatnot. And, you know, she's just telling and, and, um, and Maddie, you know, just telling her, like, how controlling her mom is, like, how much power, you know, that she has over her, that literally she don't sleep so that she can watch her sleep, and she can't go anywhere, and she has to have her location on her phone, just like, she is overwhelmed, um, she's kind of over Anna Cadabra, really, but whatever, so... She goes ahead and she ends up performing for the girls. And baby, baby, Miss Maddie has some more power behind that voice. Like she did like this rocker soul thing going on. And can you guess? I said soul because I felt some soul in this little clear girl here. Okay? So, yes, you'll hear me say because I call them clear people. But, okay, um... As I said, so baby girl is giving the business, uh, you know, singing on, you know, singing, and uh, Naomi is playing the guitar. They just rocking out, and before you know it, whoop whoop, Mama has Mama Bear has showed up, and she has bought the cops illegally. You know, kinda, you know, she can make these moves or whatever, and basically kinda threaten Jill for kidnapping her child or whatever or whatnot because they, oh, yeah, somebody mom was trying to give, you know, them the business for kidnapping her and basically saying that she could get her locked up or whatever or whatnot. But, you know, she's like, you know, come on, we got to go. We're leaving. But Maddie's like, you know, well, let me, you know, at least say bye or whatever and thank her. She did bail me out or whatnot. Mama goes outside, and Baby Bear is like, okay, like, what kind of plan can we drudge up? Like, I need a lawyer, like, basically, like, she needs a lawyer in order to even, like, you know, to even, you know, because she needs a lawyer, to, and she would have to prove her proof that she can, you know, basically take care of herself. She can take care of her own well-being. And then as well, or as well, her mom can just release her. We know the mom ain't going to just release her. So, Jill basically ends up saying, like, I'm going to put up money to get you a lawyer so that we can get you from up under this conservative ship, right? So Valeria ends up back in the studio. She ends up back in the studio with Resonance. I'm going to call him Renaissance. Resonance. Resonance. I don't uh, Resonance? Resonance? Resonance is it? Okay, whatever. She ends up back in the studio with him and baby pull, try to pull his one on him, right? So she she basically goes ahead, like she starts ad libbing in Spanish. He's like, nah, mm, I got that part. Like, you know, just go ahead and do your thing. Next thing you know, she is battling out in Spanish. And he looking sideways and he acts like he enjoying it. So I was like, like, yo, this is a vibe. Like, this sounds kind of cute. <laughs> he took her off 
the song all together, y'all. Like, nah. It was, nah. Like, he wasn't feeling it. And, you know, and Naomi's coming down on her, you know, hard for messing this up or whatever or whatnot. You know, she's so concerned about the label. Again, calling shots or whatever or whatnot. And honestly, Valeria kind of called her out. Like, you have an illness. Like, you're contradicting yourself. You keep coming for everybody. Everybody has an opinion. Everybody has a vote. Everybody put up money. But yet, you're the one that's sitting here you know, trying to boss everybody around or whatever, whatnot. So, Eric walks in like, uh, eh, y'all, you know, let's break, let's go and just break that up or whatnot. Naomi's back on SoundCloud, and what does she hear? She hears JoJo. She's like, oh, wait, who is this? Da -da -da -da. Then looks back at the track and sees that it's JoJo. And she like it, though. Like, it's fire, clearly. It's fire, but she looks at Eric like, I know this was your doing. I know you did this. <laughs> so he's like, oh, yeah. So, yeah, we should talk. We should talk a little bit. In the meantime, Jill did go with um, Maddie to go ahead, you know, and meet with the lawyer. And he's just like, look, you just need to give me and tell me everything. Don't leave anything out because she is going to use any and everything against you to, you know, to, you know, to win her case or whatever or whatnot. So she's like, all right, cool. You know, I'm going to tell you everything or whatnot. But she don't. But she don't. They go ahead and they have the meeting, you know, with the judge or whatever, whatnot for this conservative ship. And... It was honestly looking good for her. It was all well, all looking good for her until her mom. And w once her mom realized that she was losing, then that's when she realized that, that, like, okay, let me go ahead and throw in my one little hit, my one hit or quitter, because that's what it was. Basically, she throws in there how Maddie basically, she found herself uh, with Maddie with a gun in her mouth ready to kill herself. Shot down. Your chances of this court, of this conversative ship is is over because that was it that was all or whatever or whatnot and maddie was absolutely hurt she tells jill like i can't believe she even went this far because she didn't even want to tell the therapist that this happened because she was worried about it getting you know out in the you know out in the media or whatever or whatnot so you know, just like, like, you're just going to have to go and you're, you know, you're going to have to talk to her. Like, you're going to have to have that conversation and really, you know, help her to understand, like, you know, what's going on. It's, that's really what it's all going to come down to. So then back to uh, Naomi and Eric, you know, discussing this whole situation with about JoJo and him, you know, recording the song or whatever, whatnot, which he did not, you know, he's like, I didn't, you know, you know, release the song. I was supposed, you know, I was supposed to talk to you and I told her to go ahead and get to school. And Naomi's just all wrapped up and concerned about, you know, the comments, you know, men, grown men coming, you know, talking about her daughter, her daughter's body or whatever, whatnot. And this is just what she was afraid of. This is not what she you know, wanted her daughter to go through. But I mean, <laughs> it just is what it is. It's, it's you know, it's, 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 it's part of the industry. And I wish she'd just, just chill and not try to make decisions for this girl. Like she's grown now at this point. And I, but at the same time, I get it. Cause I can't sit here and act like, like if one of my kids came and, you know, I'm trying to push them to go to school and they came to me and said that they want to, you know, go in a different direction, that I wouldn't still try to push school. But at the same time, I'm just learning so much, so many things about, you know, letting my children be who they are and not trying to control them that I would hope that I would have, you know, a different response or whatever or whatnot. But Jojo comes downstairs and she's like, you know, at the end of the day, like, no, like, that's not phasing me. That that stuff doesn't bother me or whatever or whatnot. Like, you know, but you think I have talent. Like, come on, please. But even regardless of that, Naomi's still like, nah. And Jojo's like, well, I'm doing it anyway. <laughs> so... Jill does end up trying to talk to, you know, Maddie's mom. And all in all, she's just like, look, if you keep pushing the way you're pushing, you know, you're going to lose her. You think that you're doing what you're doing. You're you doing this conservative shit. You bringing up the fact that she tried to kill herself was to help her. But it really wasn't or whatever or whatnot. When all really Maddie was doing it because she wanted the conservative ship to be over. She did not actually want to kill herself, but for her, it was just like anything has to be better than this. If I do this, then the conservative ship, you know, that's over. And I don't have to worry about that no more. 
So she did end up talking to her mom, and they, you know, came to, you know, came to an agreement that she, the mom was going to go ahead and uh, dismiss the conservatorship. So you know, she goes to tell the girls that, you know, everything's good, everything is, you know, a go. She, you know. Uh, you know, is going to go ahead and end the conservatorship and wanted, wanted y'all to go ahead and work with them and, you know, be on the label if the offer was still on the table. Of course it's still on the table. Come on over, boo. We want to work with you. Mm. Wrong yourself. I should know it was just too good to be true. I should have known that it was going to be too good to be true. She took, she... She ends up, she turns around and ends up going, you know, back to them or whatever, whatnot. Because they're supposed to be meeting up. They're supposed to be meeting up or whatever, whatnot. I guess, you know, like, label stuff. Signing contracts. Whatever, whatever, whatever. And she comes in and she's automatically like, I just, you know, don't like to, you know, disappoint. And I'm like, what's she talking about? The last thing I was thinking was what was about to happen. So she was like, you know, obviously... The conservative ship shop, and from there, deals started rolling in. And basically, another label came along or whatever and offered her, you know, basically five million or whatever or whatnot. And it's basically she she can't leave she can't leave that she can't leave that she can't leave that offer on the table, you know, because at the end of the day, National Records is broke. They ain't got no advance to really offer her up with, and so there's that. You know, she, and then she has the nerve, you know, to look like, oh, don't be upset. I thank y'all so much. No, like, I put myself out there for you, and I paid for this lawyer only for you to turn around and even, I had your back. I did all this really for you. I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna make it seem like, like she did all this to have her on the record, because I don't. I think she saw the unhappiness of Maddie, and she was like, okay, what can we do? What can we get you to help? And then as well, okay, yes. No one that she wanted to work with them or whatever or whatnot. Yes, that was like probably like an added bonus. So part of me is just like, yeah, no, I'm I'm pissed with Miss Maddie, and it j literally there we go with that privilege right there. That that's 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 how they do. That's that that's that's literally you didn't do nothing but make me just prove my point of what I was just talking about. He he, he is trying to scrape up our bottom of the barrel to come and help you. We help you, and then you got something else, and well, we you too good for us now. Okay, yeah, that 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 sounds about right, cause that's usually about how it go, don't it? So, but later it's like, all right, end of the day, you know, I broke up the group or whatever to begin with, and I'm gonna be the one to save us, and I'm gonna be the one to, you know, yes, we need to get my album out, so boom, we're gonna get my album out. So she goes back to Resonance, Res Renaissance, Res whatever his name is, and, you know, she's just like, you know, she just tells him, you know, her passion, and kind of, you know, gives him, you know, a little bit of history, and, you know, like, why she wants to do, you know, what she wants to do, and... All the while, while he did not let her rap on his song, what he did do was, you know, help her produce a song where she was speaking Spanish or whatever or whatnot. So, we made some way. We managed to get somewhere. It was all right. So, he he I then. He I did my, not that I was mad at him to begin with or whatever or whatnot, but either way. They came out with a song. You know, she's speaking her little Spanish and her little vibe. And it's cute. All right. So, end of the day. End of the day, JoJo and Naomi was just able to basically to make, to make a deal. You know, Naomi was like, we definitely want to sign you to Nasty Girl Records. You know, and, and as well. Go to school, though, and let's do this music thing or whatever. As I'm thinking, it's the way she said it, how I got it was, if she going to drop out of school, it seemed like she was going to be on her own. But if she stayed in school, she would have her back and, you know, help her, you know, get into the music and do the whole music thing or whatever. So she can go ahead and she can have what she wants. Naomi can have what she wants. JoJo can have what she wants. And then it's kind of like, boom, like, you know, if the rap thing doesn't happen, you still have something else to fall back on. If, you know, nothing else. I think that's just what it is, is that we are always looking for that backup plan. And sometimes we don't need to have a backup plan. We need to stay stay with the first plan and manifest that first plan so that thing will work because having a backup plan just means that you think the first plan ain't gonna work hmm? yeah that's how you think
think of things. So, end it there. Good episode. Please like this video if you enjoy it. Put, give me some comments. Let me know what you thought of this episode. Pretty chill episode. So, um, yeah. Catch me back next week. And I'll see y'all later. Alright? Peace.